For most of the 20th century, Pluto was little more than a ghost in the night sky. Through the world's best telescopes, it appeared as nothing more than a faint, fuzzy dot drifting along the edge of the solar system. Astronomers could confirm it was small, icy, and incredibly far away, but that was about it. Its surface was hidden in mystery, and debates raged for decades. Was Pluto a frozen, geologically dead relic, or was there something more happening beneath its icy shell? The best clues we had came from the Hubble Space Telescope, which teased out vague light and dark patches. These blurry hints sparked wild speculation. Some thought Pluto might look like a battered, cratered-filled rock. Others suggested its surface could be smoother, more active. But no one truly knew. For scientists and the public alike, Pluto was a riddle, a world just out of reach. That's why the stakes were so high when NASA sent a small, piano-sized spacecraft called New Horizons racing toward Pluto. After traveling nearly a decade across three billion miles of empty space, the probe was about to give humanity its first close-up look at this distant world. And what it found didn't just answer old questions; it rewrote the book on what small planets or even dwarf planets can be. On July 14th, 2015, the world held its breath. After nearly 10 years of silent travel, New Horizons finally closed in on Pluto, a staggering 3.6 billion miles away from Earth. This was a one-shot encounter. No orbit, no second chances. The probe would whip past at more than 30,000 miles per hour, snapping photos and collecting data in a matter of hours. Until that moment, the sharpest images we had were still just fuzzy blobs. And then, suddenly, the first detailed photographs began streaming back. For the first time in human history, Pluto wasn't a dot. It wasn't a guess. It was a world. And right there, staring back at us, was something no one expected—a vast, heart-shaped feature gleaming across the surface. It stretched for a thousand miles, instantly becoming Pluto's trademark. To the public, it was a symbol of discovery, almost as if Pluto itself was saying, "I'm alive. Look closer." But to scientists, that heart, later named Tombaugh Regio after Pluto's discoverer Clyde Tombaugh, was a mystery wrapped in ice. Its western lobe, now called Sputnik Planitia, wasn't scarred with craters the way you'd expect on a billion-year-old surface. It looked smooth, almost fresh, as if the planet had repaved itself in recent history. That revelation alone sent shockwaves through planetary science. Instead of a static, frozen relic, Pluto was hiding a story of ongoing change. And the deeper researchers looked into the images, the stranger and more fascinating the details became. When scientists zoomed in on Sputnik Planitia, they saw something extraordinary—a massive plain of frozen nitrogen ice stretching wider than Texas. But the real shock came from what wasn't there: no craters, not a single one. On most worlds, craters pile up over billions of years. Their absence here meant something unbelievable. Pluto's surface was young. In cosmic terms, it might have been reshaped just a few million years ago, the blink of an eye compared to the age of the solar system. And it wasn't smooth by accident. The ice sheet was marked with polygonal patterns, like a giant cracked puzzle. These shapes hinted at something alive beneath the stillness. Slow, churning convection currents, where heat leaking from Pluto's interior causes nitrogen ice to slowly rise and sink, just like bubbling water in a pot. Only here, the water was frozen solid, and the process unfolded over eons. Then came the mountains, rising as tall as the Rockies. Pluto's peaks defied all expectations. On Earth, mountains are made of rock, but here they were carved from solid water ice. At Pluto's bone-chilling minus 380 degrees Fahrenheit temperatures, water ice is as tough as granite. These were mountains of frozen water, holding their shape for untold ages. Even stranger, many of these mountains showed signs of collapse, ridges, and summit depressions that resembled volcanic calderas. 
But on Pluto, any eruption wouldn't be molten rock. It would be a slurry of water, nitrogen, and ammonia. Scientists call these features cryovolcanoes, volcanoes of ice. And if they're real, it means Pluto once had, and maybe still has, a powerful source of internal heat. For decades, Pluto was assumed to be geologically dead. Now, the evidence was piling up that this tiny world was, against all odds, still alive. And the surprises weren't limited to the ground beneath our feet. Even Pluto's thin atmosphere turned out to have a story of its own. At first glance, Pluto's atmosphere shouldn't even exist. With gravity barely strong enough to hold on to its own ice, scientists long assumed that any gases would simply leak into space. Yet when New Horizons looked closer, it revealed a delicate, shimmering haze stretching more than 100 miles above the surface. This haze wasn't uniform. It formed in layer upon layer, like stacked veils of blue mist. Each layer scattered sunlight in different ways, creating breathtaking backlit images of Pluto glowing like a cosmic pearl. For many scientists, these pictures were the most beautiful New Horizons ever sent back. But beneath the beauty was something baffling. The haze was made largely of hydrocarbons, complex molecules formed when ultraviolet sunlight broke apart methane in the atmosphere, triggering chemical reactions that created ethereal, smoke-like particles. Over time, these particles settled down, coating Pluto's surface with a reddish tint, giving it that rusty, otherworldly hue. Even more surprising was how active this atmosphere appeared to be. Scientists spotted evidence of winds sculpting the icy plains, and even faint signs of possible weather. Some models suggest Pluto's thin air may collapse and freeze onto the surface during its long 258-year orbit, only to re-sublimate back into gas when the dwarf planet swings closer to the sun. In other words, Pluto might breathe in and out over centuries. For a world once thought frozen and static, this discovery was electrifying. Pluto wasn't just reflecting light, it was changing, reacting, and even shaping itself in ways no one expected. And as if that weren't enough, New Horizons uncovered one more mystery, something that suggested Pluto might hide a secret deep below its icy crust. One of the most surprising questions to emerge from New Horizons was this. Could Pluto, billions of miles from the sun, actually hide a liquid ocean beneath its icy shell? On the surface, the idea sounds impossible. Temperatures on Pluto hover at nearly minus 380 degrees Fahrenheit, cold enough to freeze almost everything solid. But the images revealed clues that hinted at something warmer below. Sputnik Planitia, that vast icy heart, seemed to be a geological oddball. The basin sat at a peculiar orientation, almost as if Pluto had rolled to keep it facing a particular direction towards its moon, Charon. This strange alignment could only be explained if the basin were unusually heavy. But nitrogen ice, which fills it, is light. Something denser had to be lurking underneath, perhaps liquid water. If that's true then Pluto may still harbor a subsurface ocean kept from freezing by the combined forces of radioactive decay in its rocky core and the insulating properties of its icy shell. It wouldn't be a warm ocean like Earth's, but more like a salty, slushy brine trapped under miles of ice. Why does that matter? Because liquid water, even in tiny pockets, raises the possibility of habitability. No one is saying life exists on Pluto. The environment is extreme. But the fact that such a small, distant world might keep an ocean alive beneath its crust changes how scientists think about the solar system. It suggests oceans might be common, even on worlds once dismissed as frozen wastelands. And Pluto isn't alone. Other icy bodies, Europa, Enceladus, Titan, are now at the center of astrobiology research. Pluto's potential ocean only strengthens the case that life's ingredients may be scattered far more widely than we once dared to believe. But the Pluto story doesn't end underground. Orbiting nearby is a companion so large, it's reshaped how we even define this tiny world. Pluto has five known moons, but one of them dominates the story, Charon. 
nearly half Pluto's size, Charon is so massive compared to its parent that the two don't behave like a typical planet and moon. Instead, they orbit a common point in space, a gravitational dance that has led many astronomers to call them a double planet system. Charon itself is no less mysterious than Pluto. New Horizons revealed a world of striking contrasts. Its northern hemisphere is stained dark red, likely from material pulled off Pluto's escaping atmosphere, painting a cosmic bruise across its icy surface. In sharp contrast, the rest of Charon is scarred with deep canyons, some stretching longer and deeper than the Grand Canyon, hinting at violent forces in its past. Even more intriguing is the possibility that Charon, too, once had an ocean beneath its crust. Its vast cracks and tectonic scars across its surface suggest it may have frozen from the inside out, expanding and literally ripping its outer shell apart. If that's true, Charon's story adds another layer of complexity to the already tangled history of this distant system. Together, Pluto and Charon form one of the strangest pairs in the solar system, locked in perfect tidal synchronization. To stand on Pluto and look up at Charon would be to see the same hemisphere every night, unmoving, dominating the sky like a permanent companion. And then there are the smaller moons, Styx, Nix, Kerberos, and Hydra, chaotic little worlds that tumble unpredictably in Pluto's weak but complex gravitational grip. Their bizarre orbits only deepen the mystery of how this system formed, possibly from a massive ancient collision that forever bound Pluto and Charon together. But even as we marvel at these discoveries, one question continues to spark debate. What exactly is Pluto? Few objects in the solar system have stirred as much controversy as Pluto. For over 75 years after its discovery in 1930, it held the proud title of the ninth planet. Generations of students learned the same mnemonic, my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas. Then in 2006, everything changed the International Astronomical Union redefined what it means to be a planet, and Pluto didn't make the cut. Too small, too eccentric in its orbit, and sharing too much space with other icy bodies in the Kuiper Belt, Pluto was downgraded to dwarf planet. Overnight, school posters were outdated, and heated arguments erupted not just among scientists, but across classrooms, living rooms, and late-night talk shows. But here's the twist. The data from New Horizons has reignited the debate. Looking at Pluto's mountains of water ice, its possible subsurface ocean, active glaciers, thin atmosphere, and complex geology, many scientists argue that Pluto is far more planet-like than its label suggests. If these discoveries have been known in 2006, would the vote have gone differently? Some researchers believe the definition of planet is simply too narrow. After all, if a world as dynamic and fascinating as Pluto doesn't count, what else are we overlooking? Others argue the classification doesn't diminish Pluto at all. Instead, it highlights just how diverse the family of solar system objects really is. Regardless of its label, Pluto has captured something deeper than scientific categories. It has captured imagination. The images of a heart-shaped plain, of nitrogen ice glaciers flowing like rivers, of mountains made of frozen water, these remind us that even the smallest worlds can hold the biggest surprises. And those surprises raise an even more tantalizing question. What secrets still lie undiscovered in the far reaches of the Kuiper Belt, beyond Pluto? New Horizons didn't stop after Pluto. It pushed deeper into the Kuiper Belt, a vast frontier filled with icy remnants from the solar system's birth. Out there, it encountered a strange snowman-shaped object called Arokoth, giving us our first glimpse of what untouched building blocks of planets look like. And beyond Arokoth, countless more mysteries wait, orbiting in the frozen darkness. Pluto is just one member of this hidden family, but it's the one that opened our eyes. 
Against all odds, it showed us mountains of water ice, nitrogen glaciers that still flow, an atmosphere that glows blue at the edges, and even the possibility of an ocean buried deep below. Not bad for a world once dismissed as nothing more than a dot of light. And here's the thing. Every new discovery about Pluto forces us to rethink what we thought we knew about the solar system. If such a tiny, distant world can be this complex, what might we find on other overlooked objects circling silently at the edge of our star's reach? That's the real magic of exploration. The more we learn, the more questions we uncover. And sometimes, the strangest, most overlooked places turn out to be the most fascinating of all. If the mysteries of the universe fascinate you, give this video a like. It helps bring these stories to more curious minds. And if you've ever wondered what other secrets lie hidden in space, make sure to subscribe. There are so many more discoveries waiting to be uncovered, and we're just getting started. Because out there, beyond Pluto, lies the edge of the unknown, and we've only just taken the first step.